Today we're eating grilled cheese, but we've got to make some first. Yes, but let's start with just one because we've actually never used this thing before. We got to make sure that this is actually going to go smoothly and not be a total tragedy. Grilled cheese is not rocket science. So ideally nothing will go wrong, but you never know. <laughs> no, I'm really hoping we don't screw this up or that is going to be very embarrassing. There you go. Oh my goodness. These little bit, I thought it was like two sticks. That is adorable. Check this out. It's little baby sticks. Wow, that is, that is actually really cute. And we went with potato bread because that is our favorite kind of bread for a grilled cheese. What do you want to put on this first grilled cheese? Let's just keep this one simple. Maybe we'll do just the American cheese and cream cheese. Because if you're not putting cream cheese on your grilled cheese, you're doing it wrong. We recently just tried putting cream cheese on a grilled cheese for the first time, and I will never be the same. I'll never do it any other way. So starting with the chive and onion. Chive and onion is the best flavor of cream cheese. Garlic and herb, close second. Close second. And then I think it would probably be um, cinnamon and brown sugar is a great one, but that's a sweet cream cheese. And surprisingly, I prefer sweet over savory for, for pretty much everything, but not cream cheese. Yeah, no, for a second I thought you were gonna say you prefer sweet over savory cream cheese, and I was gonna say that is not the, that's not the narrative for us. No. Surprisingly, because anyone who's watched this channel before knows we are crazy about our sweets. We have a sweet tooth like no one else in the world. Yep. And if you don't regularly tune into our channel, welcome, I'm Nate, that's Pete. We go by the Takedown Twins. We are the Michelle Twins. That's our Instagram handle if you feel like following us on there. Sometimes we post food photos and it's just kind of like a weird place that we sometimes pop into. <laughs> you've got to, I feel like you've got to be a real foodie to follow us on Instagram and actually enjoy it, you know? Yeah. I feel like some people that watch food video, I feel like a lot of people that watch food and eating entertainment are foodies. But then some people, I don't know, they just want to see you do something crazy. Yeah. Like, I think that's more like the food challenge people but we are actual foodies through and through. I'm so interested to see how this thing goes. All right, we should probably turn this up a little bit. It was radiating so much heat when we turned it on before the video that we had to turn it down because I'm like, this room's gonna be a million degrees if we leave it as is. But it seems to heat up pretty fast. Yeah, this is our first time using this. Did we say that already? I, I did say that, yes. Yeah. If you're wondering how we got it, our grandmother, my grandmother had it, but like never used it. And she asked if we wanted it before she just like donated it. And we were like, yeah, sure, why not? And so here we are with it in a video like a day later. <laughs> Seemed like a fun idea. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you've got you've got that on me. Yeah. Let's just let's just toss this on there. I'm gonna let it heat up just a touch more before I put mine in. Well, yeah. mine's in. So that's that. Yeah. We also only have one thing, one thing that we plan on talking about in this video at some point. We probably should have thought of more talking points or topics before. Yeah. We'll see how this goes. But I mean, there are, I mean, honestly, most people have, most people have probably already just like skipped ahead and are just like waiting to get to the food close up because we look at our audience retention graphs and we know exactly where people are spending the time in our videos and they just jump right from the beginning to like the food shot. So yeah. I guess if you're still watching and you plan on watching this video and hanging with us, comment me. So that way we know who the real ones are because everyone else is just skipping to see the food and you guys are the cool ones. But we will be labeling this one a mukbang, mukbang, however you pronounce it, I don't know. But we'll be calling it that. And I feel like the people that watch those style videos are there a little bit more for the conversation or for hanging out. You never know. But you, yeah, you never know. Because you often go into comment sections and people are like, I hate, I, I, like, some people, I've seen people in an ASMR comment section saying, I hate eating sounds. And we're like, why in the world did you click on a video titled Mukbang ASMR? You know, and you hate the eating, you hate eating sounds. It doesn't make much sense. Why would you subject yourself to that? Voluntarily, I don't know. You have a lid for this thing, right? Yeah. That so, might be required to actually get the cheese melty. Yeah, but how's it doing? It smells great. I'm gonna leave mine and get a little bit more color on it. Yeah. We'll see who does it better. Yeah, but I mean, luckily, unlike a burger or something, like you can turn a grilled cheese a couple times and it doesn't really make a difference, you know? True. That is the nice thing about it. It's like you can't like royally screw up a grilled cheese by like turning it three times on like a burger or something and just making it like bone dry. We decided to honor the narrative of cheese consumption in this video by bringing nacho cheese Doritos and nacho cheese yeah. or salsa con queso. Yeah, we could have just bought like brought like regular tortilla chips or something, but 
This is just going to be a whole lot of cheese consumption today. Do you want to grab the uh, the lid for it? Yeah. We'll just leave it there for like a, a few minutes and see maybe see like, how it does. We don't know. Yeah, maybe we'll we, like turn it down or something and kind of just see if the cheese gets a little bit more melty or something. Yeah. We, it, it's so actually, now that we are in this situation, it is extremely entertaining the fact that we didn't do a trial run. Yeah, <laughs> we have enough supplies. Yeah, we could have made, we could have used some of that, but I don't know. I'm just like I don't know how much is gonna end up getting eaten in the video, you know. And so I just wanted to like make sure we had it as much on hand as we possibly could. I love this combo too. It's so unnecessary. Yeah, I'm gonna check on mine just because I'm worried about it burning, and I don't want to burn the first one, you know. If I burn the first grilled cheese, oh, almost there. That's, a, that's looking pretty good. You're good so far. Yeah. Hopefully it gets melty enough. Oh, that's the thought with the lid. With the lid. Trial and error today. That's what that's what it's gonna be. We're definitely not seasoned professionals when it comes to grilled cheese. But again, I feel like it's one of the simplest things that you could do. Like. I know that some people have said in our creations battles videos that they wish that they saw the cooking part of it. But the problem is if you saw the cooking part of it, you'd know why we have not filmed it. One, it's a lot extra effort and it would make the videos longer, but we would be ridiculed. We have no idea what we're doing. No. We're just screwing around and hoping for the best. That's like, there were so many people who reached out and like direct messaged us on Instagram or went into our comment section or whatever and wanted to know how the fat American was made. And I'm like, that was such just a me in the kitchen, just trying and seeing what worked. And it didn't work at first. I remember I like, I took the ingredients, so like the half pound Reese's cup and the marshmallows and the graham crackers and stuff. You gotta go watch the video yeah. if you haven't watched it yet. Yeah, but I basically just like wrapped cookie dough, like chocolate chip cookie dough all around that thing. Just toss it in the oven and hope for the best. I don't even, I do not know what temperature it was at. I probably just guessed at what I should bake it at. And like five minutes in, all of the cookie dough just started melting off of the half pound Reese's cup. And I was like, no, this is gonna be a total disaster. I'm gonna have to like go out and buy new ingredients and like have to start this thing from scratch. And basically what I did was I just took it out when it was like half melted, half melted off and tossed it in like a ceramic bowl. So that way it like had to keep its shape to some degree and then tossed it back in the oven. Then once it seemed like it was baking, like it was mostly baked through, I took it out and then flipped it upside down and put it into like an actual more round bowl. So that way all anything that may have fallen off of the top would have like kind of like re-adhered and come together. And I have no idea how it worked, but if you go watch that video, the thing was awesome. Yeah, it worked out and then also I benefited from that because I just put mine immediately in a, some kind of vessel so that it didn't fall apart the way that yours did. Yeah. Mine is perfect. Yeah, mine. Let's let's get a look. I'd say that that's pretty good. American cheese. Okay, something I didn't cream cheese. something I didn't anticipate that we're gonna want to do now is put that lid over this and just keep oh, it yeah. like that because it is so hot. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to like almost turn it off yeah. in between each sandwich making. Yeah, I'm thinking that that's gonna have to stay covered. I did not anticipate the level of heat that would be radiating. No, this might become a problem. We might start sweating like like profusely at some point. And if we do, eh, just give us grace. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, I cannot watch this video. Look at how much these guys are sweating. But we are shooting this in 4K, so you will be able to see the sweat dripping off of us. All right, let's see how this is. It doesn't feel all too hot, so we should be fine. It's not ridiculously melty in the center, but it doesn't matter. It is perfect. Mine, I feel like, looks a little bit more melted than yours. Well, maybe not. It actually is pretty perfect. Yeah, it is exceptional. I did use the appropriate amount of butter. Mmm. This is excellent. The last time we had a grilled cheese was in the this and this or that video. Mm -hmm. Essentially, we brought in our hardest or most difficult this or that food related questions and ate them side by side to make up our minds about it. And for a lot of other people, questions like burgers or pizza or Cake or ice cream. Yeah, like really classic for Yeah, like those are like the classic this or that, but those are so easy for us. So we had to like really dig deep and think, what 
will we suffer to answer? Yeah. What are the things that would be very difficult for us personally to be able to answer? And basically, we just did a side by side of those two things and saw if you ate them back to back, would we have an easier time making that decision? Most of those things were still incredibly difficult. I want to try some sauces. I was going to say the same thing. Right off the bat, we brought this Taco Bell Chipotle. What is it? Creamy Chipotle sauce. Never had that before. And then, what's this one? This one is mayonnaise mustard mix. And we're not like crazy about mayonnaise, but we've opened up to it recently. And so that thing sounds really good. Um, if you haven't if you haven't watched that this or that video, you should. It was a whole lot of fun to do. So I'm not going to tell you what the grilled cheese went up against, but the grilled cheese won. So then, I think I've been in the mood for grilled cheese ever since. Yeah, I killed it on that grilled cheese. That was really good. <clears throat> I actually don't think that I used cream cheese on that grilled cheese though. Did I? I don't think so. Uh, man, I don't remember. I don't think so. I think it was just like the straight up like Land O'Lakes oh, deli cheese. Yep. Uh, I think we also use potato bread because potato bread is the best bread, again, for, to us, in our opinion, for a grilled cheese. And then it was just copious amounts of butter. Let's see. I think I'm gonna start with the uh, the mustard one because the Chipotle is gonna be a very aggressive flavor, I feel, following. So let's, let's try, let's give that a shot. That tastes a lot like Ken's honey mustard dressing. Yeah, but a little bit more of a um, of a sourness from the mayonnaise. Yeah, it's definitely creamier, like a thicker kind of consistency, and it doesn't it doesn't have that that honey flavor, I guess, from like a, you get from a honey mustard. But it's like a sweeter, like a sweeter mustard, like kind of flavor. I really like it. You're right, it has a sweetness, but not like a honey flavor. It doesn't mm -hmm. taste like a honey mustard. All right, I'm gonna try the Chipotle. Is Taco Bell chipotle sauce. That is so salty. I mean, I'm also using it very excessively. That is tremendously salty, but great flavor. A little bit of heat coming in right at the end. What I was going to say is, a grilled cheese has so much fattiness from the actual cheese and the butter that the spice and the vinegar in that grilled, uh, not in that grilled cheese, in the sauce, like really just cuts through the whole thing. I love that. Yeah. I don't usually, I definitely never was like saucing up grilled cheeses as a kid or growing up or whatever, but I'm liking that. I'm liking the inclusion of sauces. You wanna do two more savory? Yeah, or? let's yeah, let's do that. All right, here we go. Let's we, try maybe some different cream cheese. Yeah, we still have more of the chive onion. I don't know if you wanna use that at all, but. Let's do some garlic and herb. Yes, and I want to try some of this uh, Philadelphia Kraft Melty Philadelphia like mozzarella cheese. We've never tried that before, so that'd be fun. Let's see if this makes like an epic, very melty, stringy grilled cheese. All right, so we're gonna do the garlic and herb. Do you want to do one with the uh, garden vegetable too? Um, or just use the finish off that? Let's do That's a little bit more of the chive and onion. Let's see if, uh, if we can detect a difference between the chive and onion and the garlic and herb. Which one works better for the grilled cheese? Works for me. But me actually remembering which one is which. Yeah. The garlic <laughs> is gonna herb, be nearly impossible. The garlic and herb is just so unbelievably thick. I have no idea why it's thicker than the other cream cheeses, but it's so much thicker than the uh, than the chive and onion. Yeah. I wonder if there's some kind of like moisture content to the I don't know. Yeah. Drive? <laughs> I, 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 I doubt that so. that's bringing much moisture to the game. So what's thickening the garlic and herb so much? I couldn't tell you, but I, th I have a feeling that this is that this is going to give it off like a kind of like a garlic bread vibe with uh, with the uh, grilled cheese. That sounds pretty awesome. Now we actually discovered our love for cream cheese on this channel, which I think that most people would be surprised by, considering the amount that we've consumed of it since. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> That was like in 2021, we had done that uh, that cream cheese challenge. And since then, I can't tell you the, the number of pounds of cream cheese that we have eaten on this channel. I probably partially traumatized to find that information out. Yeah. Actually, I would be super proud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would be a crazy high number, and I would probably be 
like annoyingly satisfied or proud about, oh man, I've consumed this number of cream cheese in the past two years. This amount of cream cheese. Yeah, that would be like, how cool would that be if you could actually see that? Like in, in your entire lifetime, you've consumed this much of this, of like this food. It's almost like those like, uh, those like diet shows where like people have to like make a change in their life because like, let's say they eat cereal every single day or like, like eat like an entire box of cereal every day. And so they do some like extremely dramatic scene where they show them like how much cereal they've eaten in a year and they're like, like basically like it's like 15 it's like oil, a like oil drum yeah. like bin things yeah. yeah those things like those videos like i would i could not imagine what it would be like for people like us who do what we do or have done what we've done on youtube you yeah. know and for that for us to be able to see like oh in the past year you have eaten this much cream cheese and it's like you know like an entire like pool you know it's like an in-ground pool just like filled with cream cheese thank you mm -hmm. So we're doing two slices of American cheese on each of these. I don't know if we mentioned that. No, I don't think we did. American cheese, I know that so many people have a problem with American cheese. Let's just do this on one. How's that? Well, um, let's do it with the garlic one. I'm gonna do it on both. You doing both? Right. I'll just, I'll join you. I'll join you there. Um, but yeah, so many people have like a beef with American cheese, like, oh, it's so processed, it's so gross. But I'm like, it has its place. Even like some chefs on the Food Network have said it too, where it's mm -hmm. like, there are certain applications in which a um, just like standard melty American cheese is the way to go. It's just like, and I think that with a grilled cheese, it can't be beat that you have the super melty, overly processed American cheese. It just makes sense. It tastes so good with it. I love it. Yeah, like obviously there are higher quality cheeses. Yes. And obviously there are, you know, extremely melty cheeses. But that does not disqualify American cheese as being a fantastic option for a grilled cheese. Yeah, I think that like, oh, oh shoot, that is. <laughs> All right, I wonder if you can see it on camera, but that just shot up smoke. So hopefully we don't end up with a problem in here, but if we do, it'll be one of those like tragic montages. Oh, okay, that's why. It thinks I'm warm. Why is it so hot? I, we're gonna set off the final fire alarm in here. Jeez. Yeah, oh, like watch, this This video is gonna end up being like one of those like tragedy like montages that you've seen online of like when mukbang went wrong, you know, or when like ASMR went wrong and like, you know, you, there's that classic one of like, it's gonna of be the, Pete and Nate without a fire extinguisher. Yeah. And <laughs> just like, Grilled cheese is on fire. Yes, but yeah, no, it's like there's like that classic one You might want to like pull some butter over under, under that one But there's like that classic one of the dude with like the fondue machine or something like that And the things just like spinning round and round and round <laughs> and like that's gonna be us It's like these dudes set their room on fire Trying to make just trying to cheese. make grilled cheese and we'll be like the laughing stock of the internet. Can you grab the, the top for that? No, oh, yeah Sure can. I, I might need to manage <laughs> you might need the lid. I, 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 might I shouldn't need to be, be in charge lid. of the lid <laughs> All right, Doritos. Yeah, now that we're back to uh, cooking grilled cheeses. That had the perfect amount of texture to it on the outside, like the crispiness of the actual bread being toasted like that. Actually, while those are while those are cooking up, we'll talk about our one talking point. Yes, that's which, a good idea. Which is kind of um, about the future of this channel versus the past. And essentially, we've never talked about the fact that we started this channel during the pandemic when we had nothing else really going on, except learn how to make a YouTube video, become better eaters, and exercise. Learn. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but like, but that was pretty much all we had to do, especially during like the lockdown period. Yes. And since, we've pretty much just- Burned we, out. We burned ourselves out trying to maintain the consistency of uploads and quality and size of the videos that we were doing during the pandemic, despite mm -hmm. the fact that our lives went back to normal and most people's did. And that's just proving to be a little bit unsustainable. Yeah. And, uh, and so just moving forward, we're gonna have to learn and kind of experiment a little bit and figure out how we can manage these videos, either the duration or like the scale as far as like how big the actual videos are yes. or how frequently we upload and just kind of find a balance that's gonna work while the channel is as small as it is. Because yes. I think a lot of people forget that our channel is as small as it is, mm -hmm. which is always really flattering yeah. because I think that it means that we produce like our typical videos, we produce in, in just as uh, polished of a fashion as a professional YouTuber, but we're not. 
Um, yeah. You know, yeah, we've only got <laughs> we've only got thirty thousand subscribers, and I think that a lot of people don't realize that that doesn't uh, generate any income, and so like. This channel is a massive expense to run. So it costs a lot of money for us and it costs a lot of time with how much editing we usually do in our videos. It takes such a tremendous amount of time. And one of the reasons why we're saying that like it either we either have to pull back on the scale or the frequency of the videos is because it's gotten to the point where we're not sleeping. Like and it got to the point where there were some weeks where we were getting like maybe two hours of sleep a night just trying to edit our videos and get them out on time. And you know, then still like when we would inevitably like miss a week from time to time, you'd have, you'd hear from some people being kind of upset about it. And it's like, that's where we, that's why we kind of just wanted to address this a little bit and just kind of set the expectation or just like help people understand that like, there shouldn't be the expectation for like a really small channel, like a channel of 30,000 to be producing a quality video every single week is very difficult and kind of and a little bit unreasonable. And so like definitely you want to expect that out of, out of like a professional channel, someone that has like, you know, 100,000 100, subscribers, million subscribers, like they definitely uh, should have that expectation of putting out a video weekly because that's what their life depends on. Exactly, like it's their top priority. It's their income. For us, it's not, it's not that right now. So we have to make sure that we are managing and prioritizing our, our lives accordingly. So exactly. anyways, I'm not gonna talk about that too much, but essentially just be patient and you know, understanding as we move forward with the videos that we're able to make, um, because we just gotta figure out what can we make work? Yeah, we're just gonna be trying to figure it out. It'll be trial and error, you know? And so, yeah. We just wanted to talk about that for a second. Make sure that uh, people understood moving forward because like we've been uploading a little bit less frequently and, and everything. And so we just wanted to kind of like let you all know where we're at. I will leave them for like one more minute. You think? When I took it off, they were not they were not done. Okay, My, that side is pretty good. I'm actually gonna try this Dorito with this Chipotle, with the Chipotle sauce because that was a pretty fun, this is a fun sauce. This camera looks a lot brighter than you. It's all the same settings, but hopefully it's fine. Maybe it's just the angle. Because it kind of angled really, uh, really far down. I couldn't tell you, Nate. Let's check on this. Almost there. We're almost there. I'll keep it covered. I'm excited to see how this, uh, how this uh, Philadelphia mozzarella is. Yeah. But oh, you know what? We should try it on its own first. If when we, we were younger, our mom was the queen of pizza. She always made the crazy amounts of pizza for us and all of our friends. And so when we were younger, we used to just like, she would get these massive bags of mozzarella, uh, like whenever we were having people over. And uh, we would just like, just take big handfuls and just shove them into our mouths. And so it's been a while though, since we've had the shredded mozzarella. Just handling it, you can feel how soft it is. Mm. And the inclusion of cream cheese. That's awesome. Yeah, really good. Yeah, when we were kids, we totally just ate handfuls of mozzarella. We were fat kids. We were chubby. Oh yeah. We did a video about it a long time ago. Yeah. The uh, kind of eating the foods that we ate when we were little chubby kids with zero discipline or zero knowledge. Of that was perfect. The problem oh, here yeah. is I don't know which one is which. But that's what I was saying, that was what I was trying to say earlier. Oh, man, was I not paying attention? I have a tendency of doing that sometimes. <laughs> as Pete's talking and he's telling me something and I'm just not paying attention and then like two minutes later, I'm asking him about something that he just addressed because I wasn't listening. But yeah, those look fantastic though. Yeah, my, my thing was, uh, the thing I was trying to say was the fact that, oh, I won't know or I'm probably gonna lose track of which, I know which is which now, which grilled cheese has which cream cheese. Okay, this one. But I'm hoping I can just taste the difference. That, that would be the that would be the ideal scenario. Yeah. Not. So my one on my left is the garden garden vegetable. I mean the I mean not the garden vegetable, the uh, the chive. And then this one is the garlic. Yes. Garlic. This is this is chive. I'm gonna start with. Uh, I already had chive cream cheese. I'm gonna start with the garlic. Yeah. It doesn't look like it's melted to a crazy degree, but the second it goes in, mm -hmm. it's just creamy. Yeah. Well, maybe we should have brought the panini maker in. Do we have one? No. <laughs> I say, I say the panini maker. I mean, we should have gone to mom and dad's and stolen their panini maker. That's what I was gonna say. Because they have one that they don't use. That's what I was gonna say was, we don't have a panini maker. Our parents have a panini maker. And I think that I'm the only person that ever used it. It's been very many years. Ooh. 
this is hitting so hard. I know I already said it, but if you are not using a little bit of cream cheese in your grilled cheese, start adding it. Yeah, preferably like a flavored one like the chive and onion or garlic and herb. Garlic and herb I think would be a move for anyone because just adding garlic to the bread is absolutely phenomenal. Like I said, it kind of gives off a little bit of like garlic bread vibes, but with, I don't know, never cheese. Everybody loves garlic. It's like the memes that go around of re the recipe that calls for two cloves of garlic and it's like these like boulders of garlic. Mm -hmm. You can never use too much garlic. Garlic. I feel like garlic. You can, you can for your digestive system. Yeah. <laughs> if you can for stinking out a room with your brother, you know <laughs> exactly. But um, I feel like garlic is to savory food what vanilla is to sweet food. Because we're we're like always using way too much vanilla in anything sweet that we make. I'm just like vanilla extract, like you know, as much as I can get in it, into it. And I feel like that's what people do also with garlic. Am I spinning? Yeah. Sorry. I'm trying not to complain about it, but. A little bit. Okay. Did you try the chopping onion yet? I'm, that's what I'm going to. What do you think between the two? Mm. Maybe chive and onion. The garlic and herb is so good though. It is. That's a tough call. But the chive and onion is just a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. In the best way. Yeah, it stands out a little bit more. Mm. I'm gonna try it with the sauces again. I should use them a little bit more sparingly. It'd probably be like really good like that, you know? I'm gonna try the sauces on these second halves. These are hitting. Oh, that's something that we found out in the this or that video as well, was that we cut our sandwiches like this. <laughs> we do opposites. I do diagonal, he does horizontal. I think that the general consensus- I am in the minority. I, I was gonna say, I think the general consensus in that comment section was diagonal cutters. Everyone does a diagonal. I don't know why I can't convince myself not to do it. You don't have to. You don't have to do it like this, I mean. I'm an up and down. No, I think, I don't think anyone commented that they were in agreement with me. If they are, if they, they, if they, if they, somebody. If, really? No, yeah, just not a, not a whole lot. Maybe you saw that comment. I didn't see the comment. Every single comment, I'm like, dude, no one agrees with me. They're all on your side. There's a meme. We'll see if we can find it and put it up. But it's about the fact that you, maybe it's not a meme. I think it's just a, like a tweet. I just consider everything that's a picture. Everything on the picture. Anything on the internet with a picture. Yeah, anything on the internet is a meme, I guess. But it's somebody talking about how you just, I, I, I can't explain it. You just get more sandwich out of a diagonal cut. Yeah, and I just like, I feel like I'm, I just, I just can't, my brain can't comprehend that or process it like that. Because I'm always like, oh, then you got the small part on the ends, then I feel like you're missing out on that bite. Like you gotta eat, you gotta take a bigger bite. You know, I do, I do think that that's the general idea where that's like what most people think, but my mind just can't process that. The thing, I, don't, I can't speak for all diagonal sandwich cutters, but you have that, you have that like given start point, that first bite being that point, that's so satisfying, and I don't know why. Yeah, and then you see like, every once in a long while, you see like, I don't know, you're like watching a TV show or something, and they cut their sandwich like that, and they take the bite out of the center, and I'm like, have you ever seen that? And there's someone do that? And I'm just like, that's so unsettling, in my opinion. That is, if you're doing that, I would imagine that most people don't feel comfortable with it. That's like cutting the center of a pie. Yeah. We're just like cutting too far into it. And so that way you end up with like really small pieces on the other side. This is phenomenal with these sauces. It doesn't need the sauces, but it's benefiting from them. But it's fun with it. Out of those two, which one do you like more? I was just gonna say, I was diving into the Chipotle one with that half, and I'm gonna give the mayo one a shot. The um, mayo mustard one a shot again now to try to determine that because mm -hmm. the last time it was all first impressions mm -hmm. right now i'm really liking that taco bell one despite the fact that i think that most people would think it was too salty but again i think i'm just overusing it i think it's delicious i don't i don't think it's too salty mm. 
We are also people of excess. We don't think most things are too salty or too sweet. You know, it's like, sometimes people comment on our candy videos and they're like, how in the world can you guys handle that? How sweet it is. Like, cause I try, I've eaten candy bars, you know, on my cheat days or something. And now that I'm an adult, I'm like, what is wrong? Like, this is so sweet. And they can't process how we actually do that or we enjoy that. And I'm like, nothing's too sweet. <laughs> nothing's too sweet for me. Yeah, I am, I, I, I feel like there's probably one thing that we've eaten in the past year. And we've eaten a lot of sweets in the last year, if you look at the channel. And I think there's only like one thing that I thought was too sweet. Mm. I remember what that was. That was in our eating everything in the house video, I think. I know, I'm gonna have stuff in my face this whole video. Um, I think it was that, where we like, I think we made a bowl of cereal and we put like maple syrup in it or something. And I remember it was like, I think it had chocolate chips, maple syrup, and, like some type of like extremely sweet cinnamon toast crunch and probably something else, maybe M&Ms or something. I don't quite remember, but it was some, some kind of like mix of ingredients like that. And I think I remember it being like, it hurt, it was so sweet. I don't know which one I'm choosing between those two sauces, but I think if you're wondering and you really want an opinion, I would probably recommend the Chipotle one if you're looking for something that's really exciting. Yeah, the other one's a little bit kind of, a little boring. I like it, but it is a little boring comparatively. Exactly. The Chipotle really brings some, like really brings life to it. Mm -hmm. The other one is just like, ooh, that's nice. Yeah. Which is, I, you know, I enjoy. Do you want to try this? I was going to ask if you, I, I think, I do want to try something with like tomato on it, but yes. maybe we brought supplies to try a sweet grilled cheese because we saw some recipes online. So I think that it would be time to try that. Yeah, but we brought a bread that we've never had before. And I really want to try this bread because it sounds amazing. It's what is it, maple and brown sugar, uh, Sara Lee bread. And it looks amazing. Apparently it is new but it looks like it has like pockets of like maple in it or something. And so let's, well, I'll just, mm. I'll just show it to you. Oh, it smells amazing. Mm. Yeah. That maple scent. Okay, wow. here, here's what we should do. Like let's, let's grab an extra slice of that. Put a little bit of that brown sugar, uh, Land O'Lakes butter on yes, it. Yes, we just brown, uh, brown sugar and like, what is it? Well, cinnamon sugar. It's cinnamon sugar uh, butter that we've also never had before. We've never had anything, I guess. But we, yeah, we've never had this. We figured that would be amazing for a sweet friend, uh, for a sweet grilled cheese. Yeah. So let's let's just try Ooh. that first. This is so soft. Do we want to grill? Uh, uh, okay. I'm gonna put. It, I'm gonna put it on the bread, and then, and then I'll put the bread on the grill. Okay. But do you want to do like this extra one? Yeah, I was gonna throw this as my extra one. Now just grab another piece for the sandwich. No, I was just saying that we could share one. Oh. Huh, here's just, just, to, just to try. Look at that. We'll just use that one. I would have grabbed you another piece of bread. Thank you. And while we're waiting for that to cook up, let's make these. Make this. Wow, soup. that is that is so soft. Yeah, it's like softer than it feels like frosting that was kind of warmed up just a little bit, like a thinned out frosting. Ooh. So they have a they have Land Lakes releases some seasonal options and I saw a maple one a while ago. I think we posted it on our Instagram story. We never purchased it, but if we like this and they release that maple one again, we may have to pick it up. We're gonna have to try it. Didn't they have like a pumpkin spice one too last year, but we never got to try it? Maybe. I, I think I saw it online, but I never actually saw it in person. I don't think at least, I don't remember. Now uh, we've actually mentioned probably a few too many times on this channel in the past couple weeks, but it was just our birthday. We just turned 30, so I'm old now. So I'm just going to start forgetting everything. So even on the recipes that they used for sweet ones online, they used American cheese. I was skeptical, and so we'll see how this goes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna use, uh, we brought uh, mascarpone, and we're gonna put, what is it, what are we putting in there? Uh, maple syrup? That, that was the play. We're gonna sweeten this. So we brought the Bel Gioioso mascarpone cheese. I wonder if you nailed that pronunciation or butchered it. Bel, jo Bel Gioioso, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Oh, I put too much butter on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Definitely. All right, we'll turn it down a little bit. That's, that'll be fun. We love excessive uses of butter. That's what we grew up doing, so. 
Yeah, we didn't grow up on the cream cheese. That was something that came later in life. Yeah, I think we mentioned that a couple times on the channel, but we grew up eating just copious amounts of butter. Butter went on everything. If it was a bagel, butter. If it was an English muffin, butter. If it was any type of breakfast bread, butter. All right, I need to This is thick. Ooh, it looks like super creamy. Ooh, I've made myself a mess. Yeah, there's that like little, like little thin layer of uh, liquid on top. It tastes like cream. Yeah, it just tastes very, I mean, like by itself. I'm sure maybe other, maybe other people have more experience with uh, trying just straight mascarpone or mascarpone, however you say it. Yeah, I don't know. And uh, I've heard it said both ways. If that, that, that pronounci pronunciation is probably like the super pretentious way of saying it or something. Now we could have just made an actual uh, cream out of it that like you would typically get, or like that, you know, something that you would get in a, uh, like in a tiramisu, but clearly we didn't go the extra mile. It is hot in here now, let me tell you. I wonder if it's super smoky in here. And I wonder if the air is just kind of like getting dense. I don't know, because it kind of looks it, but maybe that's just my glasses fogging up or something. All right, so this is with, you know, maple syrup and the mascarpone cheese. There is a lot happening on this table right now. Yeah, <laughs> like, this is a little overwhelming to be honest. It probably seems so chill and everything seems like so slow moving in here, but I feel, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. <laughs> This is a lot to manage. Probably not as overwhelmed as Nick Akato felt making those massive mozzarella blocks. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. We watched most of that video. Yeah. I couldn't stop. So, so Nick Akato, think what you want about him. It's a, you, you can have those opinions to yourself. He tried making the, the largest Takis mozzarella sticks and it went tragically, tragically bad. I've never seen something like, I've never seen something flop so hard in my life. All right, so this is what it looks like. But anyways, this isn't as overwhelming as that. No, let's try this though. That's amazing, dude. I think we need to high five that. Oh my god, that is amazing. Holy cow, that's one of the best things. That was. I'm I'm gonna toot my own horn horn here by saying that it was my idea to put the maple syrup in it because we were trying to think of how are we going to make it a cream, like how are we gonna sweeten it. We had very many different ideas, but that's the one we settled on. And I'm pretty proud of it. That is amazing. All right, I guess I have to turn this thing off. This thing's very finicky. Wow. It's probably been sitting around for like 30 years though, let's be honest. Yeah, probably. That is amazing. I could eat a vat of that. Oh my goodness. All right, that stuff's dangerous business. Yeah, if you ever buy just like that thing of mascarpone, I think I'm saying that right. Maybe I'm not. If you mix maple syrup into it, it's gonna change your life. It's Holy cow. crazy. I would love to put that in just about anything. Oh I'm going to finish assembling this so we can try that. Yeah. Try that while this cooks. You already put the butter on. I have no idea. Hmm? Nothing. I have no idea how long we've been here. No. <laughs> I have no idea how long we're going to stay here. It's probably been a little while, though. This thing looks like French toast, even though there's absolutely no egg or anything. I'm going to just go ahead and say that it's good enough. All right, mine's going in. You do butter both sides of yours? Yes. There is uh, there is butter inside and outside of that piece of bread. <laughs> That's gonna be amazing. Okay, let's, let's see how this, oh, let me show the camera. Extremely excessive use of that. Wow. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this is, <laughs> that this looks all right. <laughs> or that the cameras don't like turn off or something. Can you want to turn that down just a touch? Yeah, it's, it's already really low, but eh, I don't know. Give you that. It smells like a French toast stick. Yeah. This cinnamon brown sugar butter and bread. Maple, what is it? Maple brown sugar bread? Mm hmm. That is such a chewy piece of bread. Mm hmm. It's not overly sweet. My gosh. It tastes like a, uh, like an, almost like if you took out a lot of the sugar in a, uh, in a, what is it called? French toast stick. Yeah. Wow. It doesn't quite have the same texture as a French toast stick without the egg, so it doesn't have that, um, what do you call it, um... Crust? No, um, custard quality. Yeah. Like that custardy quality that a French toast would have. It doesn't have that, but it's actually kind of nice because this bread being a little bit thicker maintains its chewiness. Wow. Despite the fact that it's also toasted. I absolutely love that. 
I guess I'm very much going to recommend maple brown sugar artisan Sara Lee bread to anyone who wants to try it. But again, those are just opinions. You know, we share some, th some opinions in videos. And sometimes, most people are like, most people are pretty forgiving if they don't agree. But then there are some people that completely disagree and like to tell us their opinions as if they are fact. And I would just like to say, no opinions are fact, you know? Yep, these are just personal preferences. Anyway, I really, really, really like that. However, we did get one person I felt really, or felt really bad for. We made a recommendation about something from the Walmart bakery, I guess. And cinnamon it's a, rolls. The cinnamon rolls from the Walmart bakery. We've had them on the channel a couple times, but we have only ever purchased them when they look outstanding. When they have the right amount of, uh, when they have the right amount of frosting on them and everything, and they just like look like a good batch. But they are probably the most inconsistent product that that bakery sells. I mean, every single time we go to Walmart, they look entirely different. Mm -hmm. One day they're dark brown and have no frosting on them. The next day they're like extremely blonde, like yeah, just extremely light, look like they were underbaked and covered in cream cheese frosting, which is usually usually when we buy them. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, we had a, a subscriber that went and bought them and they were very upset with us because of how disappointing they were. And I, you know, I felt bad, but at the same time, I can only give my personal experience with a product, yeah. you know? And like when we have it in a video, if it, if it's awesome, we're gonna say it's awesome. And I remember like the video that they had gotten that recommendation from, we said that a lot of things were not awesome from the Walmart bakery in that video. And so we will say if we don't like, if we don't like it and it's not, and it's actually not good, but, yeah, occasionally something's great uh, for us and someone gets it and it's not great for them. And I definitely feel bad, but I can't control all the variables. Well, that's what I was gonna say was, in, for me, most of the reason why we end up with a lot of products that we love on the channel is just discernment. Yeah. It sounds really good. It seems promising. We've seen a review for it or, Again, it just seems like, oh, it would be really difficult for that to be bad. Yeah. Or just by the visual of it. Look at that. Look at the oil content of that, uh, I don't know, uh, cornbread. Yeah. Looks unbelievable. But if you see something and it's like, doesn't, doesn't look great. Yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah. maybe just don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Whether we say that it was good or not. Because again, we've seen the cinnamon rolls when they look absolutely awful. And yeah. we know. Oh, don't get those. I'm gonna get those. That actually, uh, that actually happened today. But it wasn't the cinnamon rolls. It was the, uh, I think it was the pecan pecan rolls. It's like they put, they, they're covered in caramel caramel. And it looked like that caramel caramel had been way overcooked and it was like crystallized. And somehow they still made it onto the store shelves. And I'm like, I am disappointed in whoever's doing the, uh, like, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Like quality the, control? Yeah, the quality control of like the Walmart baked goods. Because they have those certain products that are always good. You know, like the Walmart sandwich cookies are always great. The so Ooey Gooey bars, despite the fact that sometimes they have more color and sometimes they have less, they always taste fantastic. Even like the triple filled uh, cheese Danish and stuff, it's always really good. But then they've just got those certain things, like sometimes the donuts, yeah, in particular, the donuts are just terrible for Walmart. Just don't get them. Yeah. But sometimes they just look like a tragedy. And I'm like, how did they make it onto the shelf? Who is in control of this? I don't know what to tell you. In the end, they do have a lot of great items and we've advocated for their bakery a number of times. I stand by it. I think I found a problem. My uh, mascarpone is melting out of this sandwich like heavily. Maybe oh. it's, oh. Yep, maybe it's time to take that out. It might be. <laughs> that, that didn't work. No, I guess not. Shoot. <laughs> let's see, let's see if I can like scoop it out or something. We have our first tragedy. This this was a gamble. I, I think we knew that. Yes. Okay, so I, it looks like we're only making one sweet grilled cheese. Yep. <laughs> I also think that this experience is becoming a lot longer than we initially anticipated. Yes. Mostly because the griddle seems to be a bit finicky. Yes. Oh my gosh, though. And uh, we're obviously talking a lot. Yeah. Okay. So this... Maybe I should move it off. Maybe move it onto another plate. I'm seeing I'm going to want to show it to them. That's what everyone's here for, right? Food close up. So here is a sweet grilled cheese that is entirely melting out. I will definitely still be enjoying that cheese though, just I guess in a different way or at another time. It's almost like the mascarpone should have been like a dipping sauce it, that we made. We should have put it on after the fact. Yes, that, that actually is a, a good idea. All Maybe right. do that sometime. I'm going to try this now and then we can decide how much longer we're gonna make this experience because it is boiling in here now. It is getting very hot. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try this. Oh, 
All right, it might be an absolute tragedy. But it is, wow. it is awesome. It probably doesn't look very impressive. The American cheese is completely not offensive mm -mm. in combination with it. Mine has a good crust on it. Yeah. Holy cow. Okay. I can't encourage you to try it. Because one, it'll probably kill you. Two, the mascarpone did not hold up. But flavor and texture wise, beyond the melting uh, mascarpone, mascarpone, however you say it, it is unbelievable. That, that is amazing. It's not too sweet. It's really well balanced. That bread, the maple that's coming through from between the bread and the, uh, and the cheese mixture that we created is amazing. The perfect amount of cinnamon. I'm getting a little bit of meltiness there. Wow. I'll be making that again. You better believe it. Maybe what I would do is make the toast that we made when we first tried the bread. Mm -hmm. Toss a slice of cheese on it if you want. And once you flip it, take it off, have it as an open face where you then put that uh, that cheese on. Mm -hmm. 100% agree. That is a fun try. I cannot believe what that became. We created something amazing. It did not work, but it was amazing. In practicality, it didn't work. If you were eating maybe with like a fork and knife like you would French toast, this would be a hit. Because then the fact that you have the melting, melting cream doesn't matter because you're already used to using maple syrup mm -hmm. and other stuff like that that does make the experience messy. Wow. I'll say it one last time. I can't believe what that became. Amazing. I would do that again. I would. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the question is, do we make one more thing? Let's we... make let's make one final epic, amazing grilled cheese, and then we'll call this an experience. Awesome. Let's make it. Let's do like the. Let's do one with tomato. Mm -hmm. um, let's do the garden vegetable because we haven't used that yet. And then we'll just, of course, American cheese, and maybe we'll do mozzarella with it. Just make the thing loaded. Perfect. Okay. Um, so this is actually the. We use this entire thing of potato bread, and so we're on to one of us. We're both going to have to have an ending bowl. That is fine. Yeah, doesn't bother me any. I'm always actually pretty surprised at everyone, like people's like reluctance to eating the end of the bread. I'm like, I never mind too much. Do we have any extra knives there rather than just the ones we used for the sweet stuff? Nice. All right, so last thing of cream cheese is the garden vegetable. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to swap my plate from this sweet one. Yeah, that got extremely messy. Like I said. I'm gonna load it up. I'm gonna load it with the cream cheese. All right, pass this off. That, um, that cream being on the plate slightly melted is reminding me a lot of tapioca pudding, like a good tapioca pudding, homemade. It's gotta be like homemade, really good. Our grandmother used to make tapioca pudding on the holidays, so Thanksgiving and Christmas, she would make her homemade um, tapioca pudding, and it was unbelievable. It was out outstanding. We love that stuff. She made it amazing, and like I can't, I, I literally cannot eat grocery store tapioca pudding because of how good her tapioca pudding was. Yeah, strong vanilla flavor to it, great um, fluffy texture. Mm -hmm. Would you pass me uh, like a tomato? Yeah, I was gonna cut them uh, once I've done this because I've got the cutting board over here. All right, well, I guess I'll sit back and eat some Doritos. We probably, probably slough most of that back. Oh, yeah. Did you expect anything else? No. Anything less? I think I'm gonna go a little heavier on the cream cheese for this final one. If we're going epic, yeah, final, epic final creation, I'm gonna join you there. Yep. I'm actually hoping these cameras don't burn out because we are shooting in 4K. And so, 
This is a pretty long runtime for that. Yeah. With our cameras, at least. I thought that this experience was gonna be like 30 minutes. 25, 30, the grilled cheeses were gonna cook up real fast. We doubled that easy. Yeah. Uh, did you use the melted mozzarella? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna use that as well. Some done cutting, some tomato. I made a mess of the table. Sorry, everyone. Do you want two slices or one? I would like one. Just one epic slice? Yeah, that thing's, that's beefy. I can All cut right. it, I can cut a smaller one. Nope, that works. We'll see how it goes. This is us and our experimental little cheeses. It would be great if we had like, you know, like a piece of like uh, basil or something to put in there. Two slices, two thick slices of American cheese, garden, garden vegetable cream cheese, melty mozzarella cheese, and a slice of tomato. This thing, that, that is going to be big. It's hefty beforehand. Do you think that the griddle will be a problem with the fact that there was formerly sweet? No, most of it's just kind of like pulled out over into the corner. And so I think that it should be fine. Cool, let's right. get them on there. Yes, let's get butter in there. Get this going. All of our, all of our knives, <laughs> all of our knives have the sweet cream cheese. I guess we should have just kept it like to, like kept it to like savory cream cheese. I mean, I, grilled cheese. <laughs> I only said the word grilled cheese 400 times in this video. I'm gonna like toss that mm -hmm. there. You only used half a stick of butter. That's that's actually extremely surprising. But I'm actually gonna open up. Oh, <laughs> this thing, this stick of butter is like entirely melted because it's been oh, too close. Oh no! To it. <laughs> There's like a pool of melted butter back right. here because of how hot this thing is. All right, here it is. Toss it on like that. All right, I'll just put it off to the side. We'll take care of it later. Put it on the lid of. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's get this last one in there. Let's see how it is. We're gonna have a lot to clean up later. Yeah. Another aspect of eating videos that people don't probably don't consider. Yeah, just the second we're done, what do you think happens? It's, we have to clean this mess. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a, it would be it'd be so fun just to think like, oh, after it's over, it's over. Yeah. It's like, no, we, we gotta go to work. We gotta go like, <laughs> the only fun time is the time that like the record button's going, you know? Beforehand, we're like, we have to take thumbnail shots. We're considering like how the video is gonna go. If like when we used to do like when we were only doing like big food challenges, we'd be like legitimately nervous beforehand. We're like, how is this gonna go, and all that stuff. But that's what's happening beforehand, and then after, it's just us having to like take care of the mess that we've created. What, what do you think our messiest video was? Oh boy, we've had a few. There's one recently that we did that we said that was like, no, this has got to be one of the messiest of all time. Because they often don't look as messy on the other end of the camera as they feel here. Yeah. They often, in the moment, we're like, we'll, we'll turn off the cameras and we'll be like, that's going to be a disaster. That's going to be a tragedy. And we'll watch back and it's like, it doesn't look as bad on camera, thank God. I want in on my nacho cheese. Yeah, I've actually been kind of reasonable with it, but here, I'll, I'll stop being reasonable with it for a second just to give it a shot. But I feel like now that I brought that idea up of what one of our messiest videos was, I feel like now we have to answer at least one or two with really oh, messy no. videos. Dude, I literally, I literally my, my brain won't work there. I can't go there. There's just so many videos it goes to. Uh, a long time ago, the Krispy Kreme video, that was like a week of just finding dried glaze around the room. That's the thing. It didn't look, well, actually, no, it probably did look pretty messy, but it wasn't the one that we assumed would be messy because not a lot of crumbs, but the glaze. Oh, I think there was sprinkles. Oh yeah, there were sprinkles like everywhere, but there was like, the, it, the problem was the glaze. It just stuck to everything and it did not want to get off of anything. Okay, I probably could have crisped up a touch more. That's cool, it needs to melt a little. It needs to, this one needs to melt. Yes because it's so big. This is the fight. This is the final one. This is the final grilled cheese of the day of the video. Yeah. I right. remember I remember we did uh we actually did talk to Eric after he did his 100 Krispy Kreme donuts video that was inspired by ours which was pretty cool. And he said he had the same experience. He's like I was he's like I was like scraping up glaze off of my table for like for an entire week. And that's exactly what was happening with us. But I guess that sh it actually is a moment in which we can address the whole collab with Eric the Electric thing. I guess we hear that at least once a week. More likely than not, it's like 10 times a week. That, oh, collab with Eric Electric. 
And I would just like to let everyone know that we have asked about a collab. We are a channel of 30,000 subscribers like we mentioned earlier. And here's a channel of like almost 2 million. We are literally less than, we're like 1.5% his size in terms of like subscribers. And so there's really no incentive for him to want to collab with our channel because everyone who's subscribed to our channel or most people are already subscribed to his and so he doesn't really have anything to gain from it. And so, well, we understand why people want to see us collab with him. I don't think that he's interested. That's at least like the energy that we have like gotten from it is like, oh yeah, cool. Like, yeah, sometime. And then we, and then we just, like, we get ghosted. <laughs> and so like, as much as I love Eric, he's a great guy. He's so nice and he's so kind. He was actually kind enough to uh, have shouted us out in that video. The reality is I just don't think that he's interested in collabing with a channel of 30,000 at the moment. Again, hopefully I mean, it, it would be really cool if this channel did pick up to the point where it was big enough for us to have it as our top priority again mm -hmm. and for it to potentially be something where we can just entertain you guys you know as part of our actual financial stability that and was sick. It, it would be awesome but as of right now we are so small yeah. that you know collabing with big channels like that and being able to continue with how big our videos were during the pandemic and the frequency and everything. It's just different now. Yeah. It would, again, it would be absolutely amazing if we could do that collab someday. But as of right now, we have no say in the matter. <laughs> We've put it out to him. I just, want to let, I just wanted to let people know that because that is probably the number one request that we get yeah. of anything is, can you guys please collab with Eric the Electric? We're trying, or we've tried. How's this how, going? How high is that? I, it seems like it keeps turning off. Like it gets like ripping hot. And then all of a sudden it's off. I don't quite understand. Again, it has probably been sitting around for two decades. Who knows? Well, once once I get a little bit more color around here, I will call it at that. Yeah, this one's melting better than the other ones did. You guys are gonna have to let us know if you enjoyed this. If you enjoyed the making and eating style video. There's probably not very many people still watching. But if you and are- And I can't blame them. Yeah, if you are, comment nacho to let us know that you actually watched it. Because if you comment and you comment Nacho, that'd be sick. You're a real one. Yep. I'm gonna take a big old bite. That's what I did, I just finished off mine. That mixture, I think that, uh, we had so many good things today. All this really hot food was really nice and like, just like, I don't know, I think we did a good job. But I think that that might be the best thing that we ate today. Just mascarpone cream and some quality maple syrup. Yeah, that was absolutely ridiculous. I think mine's just about perfect. Ah, I can't get it though, I can't get under it. There it is. All right, this is looking good. Should I kill it? Kill the heat? Yeah. Okay. It's still smoking like crazy. That's about as much of this experience as we're gonna be able to have. Yeah, I'm gonna start profusely sweating in like two seconds. One, I'm sure that most people have already tuned out. But for us, we're going to have to call this quits very soon. Okay, that is one heck of a slice of tomato, let me tell you. I offered to cut it smaller. <laughs> this is like, this is some good meltiness. Yeah, like I know that there's like, the, not all of the mozzarella is entirely melted, but like, we put a lot, of, we just put a lot of cheese on these. Ooh. Let's Did see I forget it. to put, what? I forgot to put the tomato slice on mine. <laughs> I think. Let me let me take a bite. Okay. No, it's in there. Wow. That's exceptional. That garden vegetable cream cheese is kind of adding a little bit of like a tang. I feel. And the tomato is actually making it feel fresh. Wait. I think that all that tomato flavor I'm getting is from the cream cheese. I think I forgot to put the tomato in. That's funny. Do you want to try half of mine? I've got the slice right here. That's weird. I'm just gonna have to let go of the tomato idea for my sandwich. Mm -hmm. At least yours for the camera had the tomato slice. But garden vegetable cream cheese, very good. That's like a really nice flavor, a little bit fresher for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm loving it with the tomato. Someone's gonna ridicule the way that we made these though. That's okay. We went about it the exact way we wanted to. Mm -hmm. They came out awesome. This one's definitely the most melty. Mm -hmm. I'll show you one last time. Mm. 
Mm. My hands are so buttery. I'm telling you, this experience has just made me love potato bread twice as much as I already do. Potato bread is phenomenal. At least like, what is it, Martin's? Is that the name of the brand? Best potato bread in the game. We were looking at the Pepperidge Farm one, thinking maybe we'd try a different one. But the last time we had Martin's, and it just hit so hard. The tried and true. All right, I'll stop showing you my grilled cheese now. I think I've showed a lot of grilled cheeses to the camera today. That was the video. Yeah. I'm never positive on how the food close-ups are gonna look because we don't have external screens or anything to be able to like see it a little bit bigger. And so I just I show as many times as I can, hoping that one of them looks good and that you get a solid shot. Because again, most people just kind of like skip to the points where we're showing the food and then they skip to the next one. <laughs> we don't care about anything in this video beyond just seeing the food. I think they'd be better off just going on Instagram. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Why watch a YouTube video? Go on Instagram. Plenty of still shots for you to look at. But we're happy you're here. <laughs> mm. That was amazing. But I will say, we could because we talked earlier about how like just managing the expectations around a channel because we are a really small channel. I mean, 30,000 seems big to like the average person, but when it comes to actually generating income and uh, like actually having a successful YouTube channel, it is very, very small. But I must say, the 30,000 subscribers that we have are absolutely amazing. We love you guys, we appreciate you. We, uh, we, we just have to thank everyone that encourages us. And like, there, there are so many people out there who every single week they're cheering us on. They're saying like, guys, keep going, don't stop making videos. Like they believe in the channel as if it's their own. They get excited when we release a video or say that we've made their day by releasing a video. And that's just so kind. You guys are amazing. And we really, really appreciate that. It encourages us a lot. And um, yeah, it's just, it, it's humbled us and made us want to make vi better videos. Because of course we started off making terrible videos. And that, that encouragement and that kind of support is what has kind of driven us to learn how to make better videos. You know, we're still, we still are learning, but I think we've gotten a lot better. So thank you guys. For what you said, we were terrible starting out. And the support that you guys showed us along the way was amazing. But isn't that just how everything goes? You have to be bad at something first before you get good. Yeah. Anything that you want to try, you're never gonna pick up a guitar and just randomly start ripping. Mm -hmm. It's your first time picking up a guitar. You're never gonna put on your first pair of running shoes and run the fastest marathon of all time. Mm -hmm. Or run a marathon, period. You're never going to decide, I want to learn how to bake cheesecake. And your first cheesecake is the Cheesecake Factory quality. It's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. You have to do something very subpar and then incrementally get better. Yeah, it's a good point. It goes for everything in life. And it definitely, that's definitely been the narrative of this channel. That was awesome. I think it's the narrative of this experience. If we did it again, I'm sure it would be much better and less hectic and chaotic and just absolutely ridiculous as it was today. But I had fun just kind of winging it. Yeah, you know? And we sure did wing it. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please let us know. Please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. If you are watching right now and you are not yet subscribed, become a member of the Takedown Tribe and we will see you again in the next video.